Here to react is Army veteran and U.S. congressional candidate John James. John, good morning to you. This is new. So we have Fort Lee in Virginia. It's going to be Fort Greg Adams, Fort Bragg in North Carolina, renamed to Fort Liberty. What do you think about this? Well, look, I'm a Republican. Let's not forget that uh, Republicans, the, the party of Lincoln, erased the Confederacy and ended slavery the first time. I have no problem with renaming posts uh, to get rid of uh, that, that legacy. But at the same time, we shouldn't forget our history. We should learn from it. What I'm most concerned with is those soldiers on Fort Bragg in the past two years there have been over 14 fentanyl overdoses. That's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with this administration's lax agenda that's leaving our borders open, that's letting this Chinese-made uh, uh, fentanyl come into our, our communities and poison our communities. I'm actually so focused on doing what it takes to keep our nation safe, uh, our community safe, our soldiers safe. We need to focus on our combat power. And it looks like this administration is more concerned with renaming posts uh, than and then taking care of the folks on it. I, I applaud the Army's efforts uh, on substance abuse and, and anti-suicide efforts, and I'm looking forward to getting to Washington and supporting those efforts. So you think that the military should be focused on other things, and one of the things that is a big concern among many is that the Army just missed its recruiting goal by 15,000 soldiers. That's not all. National Guard just lost 7,500 service members. Uh, the Navy only met 10% of its goal. Marine Corps only met 30% of its goal. The Air Force also only met 10% of its recruiting goal. Why are we falling so far behind, John, and what needs to change here? Yeah, a couple, couple big reasons. And, and I'll, uh, I, I used to work at the Lansing Military Entrance Processing Station, uh, a, an institution that the front door of freedom that, that processes young men and women into the military. I saw this firsthand. Um, I, I saw that uh, we're not preparing our young men and women uh, physically, uh, mentally, and emotionally. And the pandemic has had an even more dire effect. You know, uh, falling short of physical goals, like uh, the Army, I applaud their ingenuity for a 90-day uh, pre-boot camp training. But when I was growing up, we called that gym class. We need to focus on the basics, reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, uh, skilled trades, and patriotism. But the root of this, I believe, is you have the left that's teaching our young children, our, our young kids, that, uh, that this country is a, a country of racist colonizers, and the number one threat is voting for Donald Trump. And we're surprised. We're surprised that when the left tells you that you shouldn't stand for the flag, and now we're surprised when our young people won't stand up to defend free freedom, uh, yeah. I, I think that we have to address the root cause. John, we have to be proud of our nation. That's we why I want to go serve do. my country, because we live in an amazing nation, yeah. and we need to stand up to defend her. Yeah, and we still have the greatest military military in the world, but you have to wonder what the future of our military will look like if losing recruits and that trend line there continues. John, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.